guys. Alrighty, so week seven, I just finished the Thursday night item for week seven. And it's a really fun week, honestly, because especially for those coming from CSI, this is where you probably wanted to start, <laughs> which was using, you know, taking the idea of objects to the level of which you're used to operationally. But even if you're not, just understanding how we can take this object literal that we've been introduced to in these methods and really extend them into more, um, I want to say sophisticated ways of setting up objects and methods uh, across those objects and understanding that uh, what we call the prototypal uh, chain, uh, the inheritance process. So it's a fun week, but let me just say this, right? We are on week seven. So there's really this week, seven and eight and nine. Okay. So, I mean, seven for counting seven as an actual one by itself, right? If we're not, it's two weeks. So it's really going fast and we're really down to, and this is what I, you know, at this point, I'm actually just in the middle of beginning your dev one. So it's kind of like talking about dev two seems way too early, but we have to, because for dev two, you're going to have um, basically two options I've done for this in the past. One is as you move, and that's why I want to talk about it now, as you move into this section on class, using classes, using advanced option uh, objects. What I want you to know is one of the ways you could um, implement your dev to your last development project is actually to take your dev one, your CRUD operations, and write that in a class syntax. Okay. Now I'll say more a bit about this as we move forward. There's some things uh, because the class uh, instances on the actual instantiated object and some of, especially on our CRUD operations when we're dealing with the browser, those aren't, um, on, those aren't handled necessarily on an individual um, instantiated object, an instance of that. So there's some things like static that we could use as a type of um, um, method, so to speak, on class that we could use. But I want you to know that that is one of your options. So as you move through this week, right, you could already be thinking about how you're going to do your last dev project, your dev two. The other option is what we'll do after this, right? So if we go look, matter of fact, let's just go real quick because I think it's worth looking at. I don't have the Udemy course up. But it wouldn't take but a minute because there's really only two I'm working on right now. <laughs> okay, so once we finish this, then we have two sections. So week eight and week nine, or actually, is it all in? Well, it actually, it could go look. I got to remind myself. 11. Yeah, so uh, next week we cover asynchronous JavaScript. And then your dev zero is due here. Okay, so asynchronous JavaScript, just as kind of a preview, is, is really something that is um, so important. And, and it's something that we, we will kind of see this idea of progression, right? So we'll start with understanding how to make these API calls um, using asynchronous JavaScript. Now, I don't want to get too far into this because this is what we're going to learn there in that section. So the, that's going to be your other option. The other option you will have is actually making an API call and presenting that data back on the page somehow. Okay. Um, now I'll give you examples of stuff that I've written. I think I did some COVID data last time looking at charting it. So first going out to pull some of the current COVID data and then charting it was uh, my example for that. So anyway, those are the two paths that you will have to consider, right? And the sooner you kind of pick one, uh, that's where your focus will be. 
so I've had students go and choose either of these. It's not more than one, one more than the other. Although because making and writing asynchronous JavaScript is such an important skill, I find some lean that way. Um, so you get to choose. Now, the thing I want to talk about here in this week seven is something that I'm noticing that I want to get your input on because I'm really noticing there's uh, quite a few students. First, I knew this was not going to be easy. I don't know if you want to harpen back to week zero when I said, you know, when I found out I was teaching a nine week four unit programming class, I wasn't totally excited. I was more concerned about the student experience than for what it would do for my schedule. Um, and that's pretty much played out because, I mean, yeah, the workload is hard for me too because I've um, recorded all new content this semester, which is fine. I, I'm not complaining about that, but the amount of work from a student's perspective, because the thing for me is because I, and this is really true with all short-term classes I want you to know, is that the idea is that not we take, is that not that we take content out, is that it's just done in a compressed manner. So here's my point. My point is that I notice a lot of students who probably need some help are not posting on Discord. They're coming to see me, which by the way is also fine, but some are not coming to see me and not posting on Discord. So here's my question. First, why do you think, I mean, I have my I have my beliefs and I've actually talked to a couple of people. Why do, why do students kind of hesitate to post questions out on Discord, right? Why do you think that is? Or maybe if you're willing to share, why have you hesitated? Because there's not nearly as much activity as I was thinking would be, mostly because you and I work at different times, right? Like I'm ending my day right now. It's about six o'clock on Tuesday of our dev uh, one. And, you know, I needed to get this done because I also have, anyway, I don't want to tell you, I don't want to complain about my schedule, but I am prepping um, Python and my next uh, and other nine week classes because as these come to a close, I have to have those ready to go. But anyway, so my question in the reply is, you know, why? Why do you think that is? Give me some, give me some assistance. What could I do? What, in your opinion, in your experience, and whatever, what could we do to make it, you know, whatever, however, to support the students coming through something like this compressed, uh, fast-paced course? Um, I'd like to know that. Okay, last word about this week's work is that um, this week in our Learn Together, we're doing something that we haven't done before, which is we're all kind of writing something similar. and. I'm going to say this again, and I say it probably on both of the videos for Monday and Thursday, write your own code. It's the really the only way to learn. Now, at some point you have to go, okay, I've tried, I've tried, I've tried, I can't do it, I need help. That's okay. It's okay. Reach out for help. Reach out to talk to me. You know, and sometimes it's looking at somebody else's code. And sometimes in classes like this, people aren't posting their, they aren't doing the work until later. So you don't have a lot of that time. But I said in the videos this week, right? If you want some clarification or some discussion, you know, reach out to me because, you know, these concepts are, are good and they're pretty vast and we're just kind of touching the surface of them. But in this week, I'm having you re-learn, um, or not relearn, but implement again the idea of a form because everything we do pretty much has a lot on the web is about forms. So that's why I'm nailing that. You know, Andrew and his course is doing the Heyman. And I think the Heyman's great, but I would have rather liked to seen a form here. That's why I, put it in our section this week. Okay. Enough from me. Thanks. Thanks very much. And week seven. Wow. So let's just call that close week eight and nine. Really, it's only two weeks left after this week. Peace out. Have a great one. Bye.